Wow. I really feel like if it goes down to Miro's the entire way, it's going to be a 3-2 series. 91% of you think that the boys are going to assert their dominance. Let's see if you're right. All right, initiation by Never Lucky, but Chun Li reverses it using his Glider's Medallion to try and develop some momentum. Valido running that Lichborn on her talent is going to have more access to frequent defense. Smexen as well running this so that they can trade during these leg sweep attempts. attempts. We see the grapple weapon strategy from Never Lucky as they kind of pioneered that to remove the weapon from the Death Knight and remove access to the defensive ability Death Strike, which then allows the Death Knight to heal. A lot of pressure underway here between both Death Knights at very low health. Way of the Crane activated on either side, effectively a mirrored game so far. Yep, definitely double leg sweep on to Goreki and Chun Li. Goreki trinkets out on his way to the crane, wants to get some healing rolling as Smexen's low. Paralysis, Smexen could potentially fall. He's trying to kite away, gets the Tiger's Lust from Chun Li to get a little bit of distant, but running back into the fight, trying to get some counter pressure now onto the Lido. Sparks flying, anyone could fall. Goreki has to keep Smexen up, he's falling low. Now Valido getting low as well. Finally, Smexen topped off and both teams stabilized. Yeah, Mana looking better for Colo. He's also running relentless. Chun Li gets caught into a stun. Crowd control looks solid from Never Lucky in game number one as Chun Li gets bursted barely. Touch of Karma to survive. Smexen now gets grapple weapon. He's going to use the Glyre's Medallion to remove that effect and try and death strike himself back to full. Kolo's experience on Mistweaver may be outdoing Gorecki's. Kolo has way more reps on it than Gorecki. We normally see Gorecki on the Druid in this particular matchup. That could be the X Factor for Never Lucky having so much momentum in game number one. Yeah, Kolo, I think he actually mismanages port there, unfortunately portal the way into the center of the map so we'll have to make sure that these monks are getting their transcendence on point as it is such an important thing for avoiding crowd control getting out of stuns it's basically a get out of jail free card if you can't get away double stun attempt here from never lucky on a Gorecki and smex in Gorecki tops everybody off now valido falling low life kitchen exchanges from colo to keep his team afloat and uh, it's all about the mystery monks making sure they're getting that transcendence off before they get caught into a triple leg sweep Nice little interrupt onto Gorecki's soothing mist oh. into a paralysis. Smexen getting low. Can they take him down? Chun Li flailing, trying to get some Vivify cast in. Gets interrupted. Nice spear hand strike from Zap. Smexen with the anti magic shell might be able to deflect. Now they're trying to reverse the pressure. They gripped Gorecki in, but the stun was too late. Now Gorecki has way of the crane, and Valido could be in trouble. Lichborn exchanges. It needs to be enough, but it may not be as Colo gets interrupted by Smexen. Smexen with a huge turnaround. Valido retreating away from the fight, but Touch of Death has been committed. Chun Li is going to be doing devastating amounts of damage. Valido trying to hold on, but with that grapple weapon timing, Chun Li hard carry. The boys take game number one. Now, we can already see that if this becomes it's in the past, and it's interesting to see how their new rosters play out. It, it is very important to note because I think when you look at all of these players, though, as well, and you do take it a step further, I think this year they found a roster that makes even more sense for them. So I, I think we see Chun Li, Smexin, Colo, Valido. We see them in better positions than when maybe they were playing against each other. And that's why it's so fantastic to get to watch how this is going to play out. Are the boys going to be able to take it again? You already heard from Zico. Chun Li may be that X factor to look towards. Touch of death rolling on Smexin. Free life cocoon denies a lot of that damage. Nicely done by Karecki. Disarm attempt on to Smexin once again. And so far, early on, Never lucky. They have most of the momentum. Paralysis now on Nicolo. Crowd control secured. Smexen's still low. They're trying to get counter pressure on Valido, but the pressure from Never Lucky is unrelenting. Recky really struggling to top off his team. Finally, Way of the Crane gets pulled out. Smexen gets topped off, but Recky forced to retreat before using the last little bit of that very offensive cooldown. Never Lucky again with a, an established lead. It was really the boys with a huge power play and shutdown for them to find victory in game number one. And a similar situation is starting to develop here in game number two. So as long as Colo can avoid the interrupts of Smexen, and stabilize the team and establish a mana lead. It could be devastating. Colo gets swapped to, but with Wave the Crane, should be more than enough. And now Colo can counterattack. Realizing that, they use Ring of Peace to deny the connect. Colo then retreats away. Chen Li in hot pursuit. Crackling Jade Lightning knocking Colo away from the fight. Very far out of line of sight. In the meantime, though, Never Lucky continue the assault towards Smexen. Life Cocoon, Lichborn. This is a cooldown overlap on the side of the boys. Potentially an opening for Never Lucky, but Valido needs to survive to capitalize on that. Yeah, and actually, there's been an adaptation from the boys. They went over to Horde from Alliance, so you're going to have the reduction from that orc uh, more consistently, whereas for Never Lucky, they're going to have to spec into Relentless, so not going to have that trinket available. Oh, Zach! Crosses. Zach getting low into the leg sweep, but it's going to be a short stun. He does have the touch of Karma, a lot of defensive cooldown still to rotate through, but that does force out the life cocoon. Now Smexen under fire once again. Good pressure here from uh, Zach and Valido. 
A lot of damage rolling. Gorecki gets interrupted. Triple leg sweeps. Vexen could easily fall. Big death strike keeps himself alive, but Gorecki has work to do. Mana is even. Cooldowns look similar on both sides. It's anyone's fight here, and surprisingly, Never Lucky are going toe to toe with one of the top point earners. If Never Lucky can manage to secure this series and advance to face the Mew Mew Kitty Cats, they could be going to the Spring Finals. But it's going to be a very difficult fight. Felito on the back foot, retreating away, and we've seen what happens when he has to retreat. It's not too good. Touch of death committed by Zach, looking for a kill on Smexen. Lichborn denies that hit, or at least a significant portion of it for now. They switch their attention now over to Chun-Li, but Chun-Li, he can make that power play. He's got Touch of Death rolling. This is the same situation. Colo needs to avoid being interrupted and crowd controlled at all costs. Zach predicts the attack pre-Karma's. Valido able to survive with a pre-Lichborn. Preemptive moves by Never Lucky. They survived the power play. Now have an opportunity to overwhelm the boys. Yeah, smacks in. A lot of reverse damage coming in from that Touch of Karma of Zach. Reki forced to trade out that life cocoon. Now smacks in's really vulnerable, but there's two targets for the boys in this matchup. Zach trading out his karma and playing Relentless. He's not going to have a trinket to get out of the next stun. If he gets caught, there might be a huge attempt from the boys to actually take him down instead. If we look at mana, both of these Mistweaver monks are relatively even at this point in the game. They don't have a lot of time left. A double attempt here on to Never Lucky. Leg sweep on Zach as well as Colo. Colo manages to break free and escape, trying to look for some heals on Valido to keep him topped off. Paralysis on Gorecki. Good crowd control from Never Lucky. Smexen dipping a little bit low. Both these Death Knights in trouble. I mean, both of them could go down at any moment. Gorecki trinkets out of the triple legacy, but Bolito is disarmed. Colo's got enough mana for Way of the Crane. This could be huge for a big push to kill Smexen. No life cocoon for five more seconds. Gorecki needs to stall this out as long as possible. Another second, but now caught in crowd control. How much longer can Smexen hold on? Colo's Way of the Crane almost netting them a kill. Gorecki moves in, lands a triple leg sweep. Smexen manages to survive the Way of the Crane push. Now Colo in crowd control. Bolito falling behind. Zach gets knocked off the side. He's going to have a hard time getting back to the target. It's all about uptime in this position when healers are completely out of mana. Who's going to fall first? Gorecki gets stunned up. Smexen gets bursted. Flyers Maledict gets life cocooned by Gorecki right with one second remaining. Potentially mana for Gorecki to use Way of the Crane. Doesn't look like it. Both monks totally tapped on mana. Death Knights. Smexen has the lead in terms of cooldowns with Lichborn available. Chun-Li though with a nine second timer on Touch of Karma. Maybe a swap over there. We see a preemptive life cocoon. Colo does not have mana to heal so they're just going to have to use cooldowns when they get him as frequently as possible. Double stun initiative by the boys now reversed for the side of never lucky uh -oh. that was exchanged by Smexen. this lichborn needs to be enough will the touch of death of zach crack through this is a power play for never lucky if they can't get a kill with it chun lee is going to punch back hard yep now valido in a lot of trouble touch of death rolling on him we saw what happened in game number one. Chun Li was able to take him down. Colo, what is he going to do? 20 seconds left on life. Kaku Valido still rotting down low. He's trying to kite, but the grapple weapon comes in from Chun Li, denying Valido a lot of that death strike healing. Still trying to just kite, create space, run away. Gorecki into the X68 Sun. Smexen getting low. Double leg sweep coming in. Valido does manage to break out of that with that Lichborn. Chun Li now with a big fist of fury, but still never lucky. They're managing to hold on, and Colo, he has Life Cocoon back. So does Gorecki. He's going to use it on, trades it out onto Smexen to keep him alive. Chun Li running out of cooldowns as well. And now Chun Li is an incredibly vulnerable target. Cooldowns are in favor of never lucky, at least on the monk side, but Valido isn't looking too good right now. How is he going to deal with this? Basically, nothing left to heal, and he gets punted off the side. Colo, though, in line of sight to be able to recover. Colo needs to split up if he gets double stunned. Could be devastating. Rolls over gets crowd control onto Gorecki, but Valido gets caught into a leg sweep. There's nothing left for Valido. They go after Smexen, but he's got Lichborn to deny the kill. Grapple weapon should be denying enough death strikes for Valido to ultimately go down, holding on by a thread here, but they go for the kill on Chun-Li. Potential cross kill. Gorecki gets crowd control. Chun-Li able to use that diffuse magic. Gorecki ports back, connects a couple heals, but now Smexen was left behind. He is isolated. No life cocoon on 12 seconds. Caught into a leg sweep. 10 seconds on Kolos. Both misweavers just praying for a couple of extra seconds to get another life cocoon out to recover. Chun Li falling behind. Grecky has to heal two members, whereas Kolo only needs to heal one. Never lucky, have a huge lead. Yeah, Chun Li low. Could they take him down? He manages to port away. Zach in hot pursuit. Beautiful ring of peace denies. Chun Li still out of line of sight, but this leaves Valido and Zach to just tee off on Smexen. And like you said, it is all about uptime in this situation. Just so much pressure for Never Lucky. Smexen rotting down low, holding on by a thread. Grecky trying to keep him alive. Chun Li still vulnerable. He has to roll away, and that means he can't actually get any damage rolling. Things are falling apart for the boys. Touch of Karma is going to be available in four, three, two. Chun Li, one. He goes for the top. Both Touch of Death activated. Anyone could fall at any moment in this point, and Smexen is going to go down.
This was a huge domination game for Never Lucky, having pressure on two members of the team throughout almost the entirety of the off against the Mew Mew Kitty Cats, who are so close in points to them, with only 20 separating them going into this tournament. They are showing that they can go toe to toe even with the boys here in the upper brackets. Momentum consistently in their favor. Chun Li and Smexin were not able to find any openings in that last game, and if Never Lucky keeps shutting them down, they may be able to take the whole series. Definitely good pressure on Valido early on. Chun Li already committing his touch of death. A lot of damage going to be rolling here. What is Cole going to do to respond? It's likely he just trades out the life cocoon. It's very effective healing to keep Valido alive. Grapple weapon attempt. Now one on the Smexin. Good pressure. He trinkets out. And he's going to be fine. Greki trades out his life cocoon. So a fair exchange from both teams incredibly early on. All right. Let's see at the mana situation currently. Greki slightly behind. Zacket swap two. The pressure on two members appeared to be critical for Never Lucky's victory in the last game. Potentially we see that adaptation by the boys as well as they split their pressure between two targets. And I'm curious to see which Miss Weaver ends up handling that split pressure better. Colo rolls in. Looks like he wants to get something set up. Goes for a leg sweep, but Ooh. only hits Greki. Interesting that Colo is not running way of the crane. He's actually focusing on a completely inefficiency game, trying to play for a mana advantage. This is a significant difference between Gorecki and Colo, and I'm almost wondering what is going to work out better. Obviously, the way the crane is going to allow Gorecki big pushes, but currently right now is just struggling to deal with the consistent pressure of Valido and Zach. Yeah, definitely, as Chunli and Smexen rot down low, Gorecki has some catch up to do. A beautiful mind free secured by Valido. Colo has to play catch up as well, and there's little nuances in this matchup. When you saw Colo only land a light sweep on one member, that's because Chun Li was using his fists of fury to parry the incoming stun. So these Windwalker monks can read that with their turbo fist, with their fists of fury, they can avoid those stuns entirely. And little things like that definitely add up huge in a mirror match. Yep, avoiding stuns important in this matchup as Smexen dips low. Greki's in crowd control. Holding out to connect a life cocoon just in the nick of time, but Colo still establishing a lead with this non way of the crane build. And it looks like Gorecki is the one struggling. Now interrupted by Valido. Good crowd control, and I've really never seen the boys this much so on the back foot before. Yeah, things are looking good here for Never Lucky, and there is just so much on the line for them. If they can stay in this upper bracket, if they can take down the boys, they are setting themselves up for a beautiful match as Smexen rots down low. Pure domination from Never Lucky in game number three. You can tell just how bad they want it. Do you go back to the trade? Oh, I, I thought Colo was going to lock in Way of the Crane. I was going to be like, what is Colo up to? Uh, he starts with Way of the Crane, switches over, then Gorecki picking a book from Colo or page from Colo. Colo switching back to the way of the crane, but that's not going to happen. Both of these monks are going to be playing a very defensive build uh, in this matchup. Yep, this could be a bit of a longer fight as Way of the Crane is one of the most expensive. I do believe it is the most expensive ability a Miss Weaver can take. So the mana is going to be a lot more readily available on either side. And on Tolveron, they can set up for drinks as well. So the boys are playing it a lot slower here as they are on match points. Crowd control initiated by Never Lucky. Greki denying the push with that life cocoon, absorbing that huge hit from Zack entirely, as well as Chun Li's touch of death has been almost entirely negated. We do see a bit of a rush down on Colo, trying to take him out, but a ring of peace, well placed, protects him. Colo fake cast the mind freeze, fake cast the pet interrupt. Good fake casting by Colo. We saw that cost him game number one, but right there, really outplaying Smexen. Yeah, Colo's still under fire. Oh, that she torpedoes into a wall. Not the best situation to be in. I don't think he has any mobility left. Colo's gonna have to tank through a lot of this damage. Chun Li has uptime. Smexen has uptime. What is Colo going to do? He does have his transcendence, but he had to use a lot of mana. Surprisingly, Gorecki had to use even more in that exchange, so. That's a still a favorable trade for Never Lucky. Well, as they go after Colo, Smexen and Chun-Li give Valido and Zack their backs, and they cannot parry any incoming attack. Smexen gets grapple weapon. Greki gets crowd controlled. Solid play here from Never Lucky. Good initiation. Now Colo gets gripped into the fight again. Opting to set human every man for himself. Ability to get out of the stun, reposition in center field, and get his team stabilized so they can get aggressive. Mana is slightly in favor of Never Lucky, which if you're the boys on match point, that is not too good for you. Life Cocoon exchanged here. An opening for Touch of Death in 30 seconds, potentially from Chun-Li. Curious to see if he can make a play with that. It looks like they want to be attacking Colo. They're trying to risk everything on these healer swaps, but it's costing a lot of Gorecki's mana to do so. And if they can't take him down, that mana is not going to last forever. Yeah, Colo with a beautiful leg sweep gets behind the pillar and is going to be completely fine. And 
It's difficult. Like you said, Smexin and Chun-Li, they're getting good pressure on Kolo, but every time they do that, they're giving their backs to Zack and Valido, and that's when they can really tee off, generate a lot of pressure, and that's why you see such a massive mana lead for Never Lucky. Are they really going to be able to do it? Can they beat the boys in a complete mirror match? You can tell how much they've practiced. They are prepared for this particular matchup, and they're playing it out well. Now Valido under fire, taking a little bit of pressure. Grapple up on, onto him, but Chun Li gets caught into the stun with no trinket. This could be the touch of karma, and Gorecki falling further and further behind. Turbo Fist allowing Chun Li to protect himself and parry incoming attacks. Gorecki's mana is not looking very good right now. Kolo's been dealing with this calm, cool, and collected despite being pressured by the boys throughout this fight. Oh, but ultimately wow. getting interrupted. One interrupt could cost him the game. Maledict gets gripped back on the Chi Torpedo. Where is the transcendence? Kolo, you need to make a getaway here very soon. That shield has all but evaporated. Smexing getting counter pressured. Could be a race here to the finish. Gorecki connecting a couple heals, costing even more mana. Kolo gets stunned. He fortified Elixir right before all that incoming crowd control, but then gets mind frozen. Smexing all over Kolo. Good prediction in that attack. Connects a couple of soothing mists but desperately needs to escape to safety. They've got the mana lead. Kolo just has to keep it going a tad bit longer. Yeah, where is his transcendence? Kolo needs to start creating some distance. He cannot afford to tank through this damage. Triple X sweep coming in. Gorecki charges forward to try to take down Kolo. Oh, he's in caught spotlight. in the ring of peace. He's trampoline. He can't do it. Oh. Beautiful setup there by Chelney. We are going to get a replay of that because when that is pulled off, have already done something that's quite difficult, and that is go toe to toe with each other. Two powerhouse teams in NA. Boys currently sit number two on the leaderboards. We're going to see them a little bit later on to close out this season. But Never Lucky wants to be up on the same stage with them. If they can close this oh. out, they'll have their matchup. This is going to be a capital S M O R C game, I believe, as both healers are going to be pressured start to finish. Which healer will crack first? It's Matt. Points. Never lucky. Qualifications potentially on the line. Yeah, Colo under fire. He's already used his transcendence. You can look. Colo doesn't have any defense. Oh. Left. Gorecki getting low. He transcendence away, trying to play a greedy. Finally, the life cocoon connects. Now Zach moving in, getting the leg sweep. Gorecki having to trick it out. Both of these misweaver monks have nothing left. At this point on Ruins of Lordaeron, if you're a healer facing down the barrel of a Death Knight Windwalker with nothing left in your pocket, Colo is better positioning. Uh -oh. Gorecki gets isolated. He's getting annihilated. Never lucky. Are they going to take out the boys in the upper bracket and face off against the Mew Mew Kitty Cats? Huge recovery. Gorecki out of nowhere, managing to restabilize, potentially a cross kill if Colo gets pressured. Colo's transcendence basically nowhere, but Gorecki gets interrupted. Huge damage following suit. Ring of Peace protects Gorecki for now. That ring of peace misses from Zack. Gorecki now able to stabilize as a result. Kolo is down at half health, and now suddenly he's in so much trouble. Interrupted for one more second. Life Cocoon connects, but multiple Gladiators Maledicts are absorbing the healing. Wave the Crane likely to be activated on both sides, which is going to boost the damage enormously. Kolo manages to stabilize with his Wave of the Crane. Gorecki still has his, but he has no way to get out of a stun. The next stun can close it. Gorecki knows that. He pre-Life Cocoons, but they hold on to the stun, waiting for the shield to fade. Now going for a stun on the DPS to survive. Polo tries to escape, but in line of sight of Death Grip is unable to. Big mistake. Yeah, big mistake coming in from Polo with that transcendence. Can he get away? He has it off cooldown. What is he going to do? He's trying to get behind the pillar. Cotton to the stun. Do they have the damage to take him down? Polo holding on by a thread. Transcendence into the middle of the map. Bring a piece. Throws him right back into the boys as they take him down. Wait, 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 wait. Gorecki still doesn't have anything for four more seconds if they can stay on target. Valido desperately trying to get there and close it. Grips Gorecki back in. No mana left if they can land the interrupts. Gorecki fake casts the mind freeze. Ring of Peace gets him knocked into the wall. He's still low on health. Zack portals in, gets stunned. Gorecki connects one heal. Zack needs to land an interrupt, but he doesn't have it. There's no interrupts. Gorecki's going to stabilize. Lido is going to fall. And the boys keep it together all the way throughout. And now, if you are the mu Finals, let's see. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.